Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees and I am on location here in Central Florida. I'm in the St. Cloud, Kissimmee, Florida area, a little north, a little south of Orlando. And I wanted to come up here and check out a nursery here in this type of climate. This is a, a good amount cooler than where I am down south. And you can't grow everything here. It's not, even where I am, it's not tropical. Uh, but here it's, you're getting in the mixed place of tropical and then you go to subtropical and now you're getting into the colder climate up here so i wanted to check it out and see what they're growing up here and uh we're at nick's edible nursery they're growing a lot of uh trees here and to my surprise they're able to grow a lot of trees that i can grow down south now there are some that they might have to keep in pots and protect them in the winter time but they said here it gets cold here but it doesn't stay cold so it might get freezing but only for like an hour or so at some times. So enough to get those low chill hours to actually uh, grow things that I can't grow down south. Uh, certain types of peaches and, and, and certain types of plums and stone fruits and things like that. A good amount of persimmons and things like that. But they could also grow some things like avocados and even mangoes here. He has some mangoes in the ground. So I just wanted to do this uh, for my own knowledge and also for you, those of you that are watching Fruitful Trees. If you live a little north of me, in the central Florida area, or maybe even North Florida, and you could see, uh, get a good idea of what grows, and this nursery is wonderful, makes a great guy, so you definitely gotta check it out. I'm gonna put his contact information below, and uh, his, his, you can contact him at there if you wanna get one of the trees here. He has a five acre property, this is really cool, we're gonna check it out now, and then I'll come back with some comments afterwards, but let's meet Nick and check out his property. Okay, everybody, here we are at Nick's Edibles, and this is Nick. How you doing, Nick? How's it going, guys? Life is good. Good, good. So tell us a little about the nursery. Uh, it's out of your house, I see here. Yep. How many yeah, acres yeah. do you have here? I, I got a five-acre property. I'm, I'm agriculture zone, so we, uh, we're we allowed to do this here. I got my ag classification and do do all kinds of stuff, probably 75 different kinds of fruit trees, just just finally, after a couple of years, starting to get stuff, some stuff in the ground. Some hog plums right behind Paul here and and some pineapples and, and whatnot. So what uh, made you decide to do this? Man, I bought a couple of banana plants off of Craigslist. And I'm that guy that gets over-involved in his hobby. So one thing led to another, and, and here we are. As you can see right here with the Volkswagen, I got I got other hobbies also that that can easily take all your time too. But yes, so uh, we're here in more north of West Palm where I am. We're here near the Orlando area, Kissimmee area. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell us today about, from your experience, what trees do well up here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're in a unique spot where we can, we can grow apples next to mango trees if you pick the right varieties of apples, of course. But we're, 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 we're solid 9B here. I mean, I can go into town and, and there's actually, you'll find coconuts here and there in a little bit of a warmer spot. So although we're this far north, you, you definitely in Osceola County got some real warm spots that you can get away with growing some stuff that, that other people in Central Florida definitely can't get away with. And how so, cold does it actually get here in winter? Well, I mean, 28 to 30 degrees is is kind of pushing the, the low side of it. But... but, but we will freeze though here. Yes, we, we do get some freezes, but but generally it's only for an hour or two before the sun comes up. Sure. So so you don't get that long duration. So m more mature stuff can generally handle it. Young stuff is going to definitely need protection. Now, do you have to bring most of your stuff in during the winter or not necessarily? I, I'm pretty fortunate in, in a way. I, I live in kind of the swamp over here, so my ground is real warm. So I get away with everything in containers, just lying it down with frost cloth and being so so close to the ground and being so warm, I really don't have much damage on anything. Great. So you're in a spot where you get enough chill hours to do things really well, like peaches and persimmons, but in the same hand, you're, you're not too cold where you could still do some tropical mm -hmm. stuff here. Like, like for example, the... Oh. Whoa, come here. My, uh, my, my friendly sidekick over here. Beautiful white dog named Blue. <laughs> okay. Ironic. But, but like I said, you can see these, these hog plums right here behind you. They, they, didn't get, they didn't have any protection this year. And, and 
Oh, this is a red or yellow? This is a yellow. You can see some of the fruit starting to, to ripen over here. We're down in West Palm Beach. You guys have already... Yeah. Uh, we're, a <laughs> we're kind of a month behind you with everything, just... Being this far north. Yep. Okay. And so when you sell your trees, what's the uh, most north people usually order from? North Florida, Georgia? I mean, I do. I have customers that come from Georgia and, and places like that because... It's still, it's still, you can stop here instead of making another two or three hours south and, and get a lot of the stuff that that you would travel south to get. Sure. So you said you're 9... 9B. 9B. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what does that go up to? How far north does that go up to? What, 9B? Yeah. I mean, you get a little farther than... Cla somewhere between Ocala and Claremont is where you kind of get the 9A, 9B. Okay. So... I, I kind of make the the, the joke or, or whatever that I four is kind of the imaginary line. Got if it. you're if you're south of I four, you can start to get into the more more tropical stuff. If you're north of I four, it starts getting much colder for much longer in the winters. Great. So what? How do mango trees do up here? Mango do, trees do pretty good. I got a couple in the back. I just put in the ground that that I'll show you. Um, my neighbor has a nice seed grown one that's 20 30 foot tall and really wow and and i know a lot there there's actually lots of big mature trees in this area uh buena ventura lakes bbl for example i make the joke it's like the mecca of mango trees in central florida because it's a little bit of an older community of a lot of hispanic people that planted trees decades ago so you'll find kind of like in south florida you'll see all these big huge trees in that in that area so from your experience, what's the most tropical tree that you've seen be successful in this area? Coconut. Coconut. Probably probably coconuts. Wow. Wow. So. Great. All right. Show us around. Show us what you right. got here. So this is your front yard here. You take us wherever you want. Yep. We'll, we'll kind okay. of take a walk all the way around. Lots of pineapples over there and some finger limes. Um, sugar loaf, which are the white fleshed pineapples with the edible core, and Florida Special, which used to be a commercial variety of pineapples in Florida a hundred years ago before they figured out they can put them on container ships and ship them somewhere else from somewhere else. But, but that's really cool. Like I said, they were they were specifically grown here commercially, so obviously they're going to be one that does really well, and they got a red skin to them, which is pretty showy. Yes. So. And then moving along, you got olive, twe olive trees, Arbaquina, Spanish black olives, and, and all kinds of figs. I see a bunch of figs here. So where I am, it's a little hot for figs. We have a few that do okay, mm -hmm. but they don't thrive like in where you're from in yep. Southern California originally. That's the fig capital of the United States. How do they do up here? They do good. I mean, the, other than the problem of nematodes. Uh, sure. Uh, other than that, they, they fruit just fine up here and, and do really good. When you, say, when you say fruit just fine, are we talking like California fruit or not? No, not, not that, I mean, nothing does that e good. E even when you get into like the stone fruit and the apples and all of that, although the fruit is awesome and delicious, you're not, you're not going to get the production out of temperate stuff when you're kind of on the border. But, but I mean... Peaches, you get hundreds of peaches a year off your trees on, on nice mature trees. But you wouldn't on a mature tree, you wouldn't get hundreds of figs down here, would you? You can, yeah, oh, absolutely. Really? Okay. You, you can if you if you get into you know some bigger mature fig trees, they get pretty loaded. Okay, okay. Well, that's nice. You got all these fig trees here. Some olives, okay. Aki trees. Oh, aki grows here. Yep these these are actually wow. really cold. They're actually much more cold hardy than well, I don't know about much. A bit more cold hardy than mangoes and stuff oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Okay. And, and you know, when when you start to get up here, a couple of degrees more hardiness makes all the difference. Now, what about people here? Because I, I know near me there are a lot of people from Jamaica and so mm -hmm. on. A lot of people buy aki up here and look Absol for aki. Absolutely. Okay. There's a nice yeah, yeah, aki tree. Okay. You know, Barbados cherries do really amazing here. You're you're a little late. If you were here a month ago, some of these apple trees had apples on them. Wow. Wow, I got so some apple trees, and then you know persimmons. So tell us about the persimmons up here, because near us there's only really tropical triumph. persimmon and triumph are the two yep. made and ones. So what about up here? Can you get? I mean, it? we we can get away. We can get away with most of them. 
I mean, the foo yous and the, the non-astringent ones do really well. Where down your guys' way, they're going to want more chill hours. Yeah. So that becomes a struggle. But Can you do high chia here or no? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. High chia, Tananachi, Seijo, all these guys. Yeah, I would say that. I love persimmons. If I was this far north, that would be my main crop personally. Yep. And it, it's crazy because you don't get a you don't get a lot of people selling persimmon trees, but there's a huge market for it. Like people really love persimmons, but but you tend to get with the nurseries, people get into the you know, they get focused on mangoes and and, and you know the, the ten same kinds of fruit trees, but but there's a lot of stuff that people really want that are in addition to those. Sure. Now, the more tropical persimmon trees uh, stay small like a bush. And I know I've been up north where they get really big. How about this area? I mean, with pruning, you would keep them manageable. But they, they can they can turn into big trees over time. But, sure. but pruning with persimmons is important to keep them producing well. So Now, will the tropical ones grow down here? Absolutely. Up here? Yep. Do you sell those? I do not. No, okay. I mean I have a couple of triumphs of my own, and I have someone I'm working with to propagate them. But at this at this time, no, no triumphs. Okay, all right. So that's for Simmons. Okay. Here, here you go. Here, these are all giant fuyu in here. Oh wow! Which you know, fuyus have a little, a kind of small fruit. These these can get twice that size. Oh, look how big these are. So give us an example of how much are the fuyus? Because these are big size. What what do you mean? How much did it cost? Oh, forty dollars. All, all the wow. the five gallon persimmons are forty dollars. Wow! And, and they're all grafted on native persimmon rootstock, which you know, as you will know, if something's on native rootstock and native terrain, you, you got a big advantage. Do you graft them here yourself? I do not. Okay. I get, I got a buddy up in North Florida that helps me with those. Okay. Do they have a persimmon farm or something up there? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They there, there's a couple of guys up there, and and they do they the the one has a U pick. And um, yeah, I've been wanting to check that place out. Uh, I heard about it. So, is it all winter? That's when they all the persimmons are in. Yeah, in I winter? mean, persimmons ripen here in about September, October. Okay. Wow. Do you have you heard of people down south having success with the for you? Da down into like Fort Pierce area, I know of some people having some success. Farther south of that, it starts to get a little more yeah. spotty. I mean, if if you really want some crunchy persimmons, you could grow them in West Palm Beach, and I'm sure you get a couple of fruit, but I think you guys got 30 chill hours last year. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I only got 131 here, which isn't a lot, but it, it was enough to set apples, peaches, plums, persimmons, wow. Wow. all that kind of stuff. All righty. And I do lots of bananas. Probably lots got of 15 bananas. different kinds of bananas over here. What's your favorite banana? Uh, my favorite banana is Mona Lisa. That, that's from a breeding program down in Central America, although I can't find them anymore, and I, I have a couple to plan out, but but uh, Mysore Piecing Ceylon is a ladyfinger banana that is amazing. You, you got uh, all the confusion with ice cream and blue javas, whereas ice cream's a, a tall namwa, which is an amazing banana. Blue java's cool, but it's flavor-wise, it's just average. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I actually heard of people in South Georgia growing bananas. Mm-hmm. I have the variety that they grow over there. It's called Viente Cojo. And what it's a short cycle banana. So literally in the winter, they can burn all the way to the ground. They can come up fruit and harvest fruit before the next winter. Wow. They, they go from flower to ripe in about two months. So so are, are bananas like persimmons where some do better and some don't do well with certain chill hours and so on? Abs absolutely. Okay. You'll, you know, Cavendish like your store-bought ones. Um, they don't like the cold as much. You you can get into a lot of other varieties that will ha will handle the cold and just get beat up a little and bounce back. Whereas Cavendish, being the kind of common banana that everybody knows, doesn't work real well the farther north you go. Okay, great. All right. I see but, some papayas here. How do they do up here? Papayas are good. They're they're kind of the first ones to go in the winter. But the cool thing about papayas is. Plant some more seeds, and, and in six months, you're already fruiting again. Yep, so, yep. you go pomegranate. How, how do you do on perennial greens here, like a took and, and these things? Do they grow up here? Yeah, they, they do well. I'm, I'm not, I don't grow a lot of greens. I'm just a fat kid who wants to eat delicious fruit. Got, so. yeah. But no, no, there, there's lot, lots of that stuff. And, and you know, I, for, for that, I do strawberries 
in October and, and you know, they're, they're kind of only make it in the season because then summer comes and they get toasted. But coming on this way, what else we got hiding over here? So you got pomegranates here, huh? Yep. How do they do here? Salveski and Aziti. They're good. You gotta, you gotta be careful with pomegranates because many of them don't like the humidity in the rainy season. So you'll end up dropping fruit and fruit cracking. But some of the Russian varieties do well and produce well over here. Got some, some peach rootstock over there, some Florida guard for some grafting. Some, some uh, goji berries and society garlic. Dragon fruit. Right, some yellow dragon fruit. Oh, so yellow dragon fruit does well up here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yellow is the one I like, flavor-wise. Flavor-wise, it's great. Uh, it doesn't do as well down south as gotcha. up here, the yellow one. At least I haven't seen people growing it down south as much, but that's wonderful. All right. So, passion fruit, some possum purple, and some granadilla. Oh, you got granadilla. Wow. That's great. Yeah, so passion fruit does really good up here. And then, passion you know, fruit. Now, you said you had granadilla as well, mm -hmm. which is a passion fruit. It's like a sweet of passion fruit a lot of people don't know about. But and, and if you look at them, the, 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 the structure of them is completely different. These guys, they're, you, you, can, you can yank them all around. The, the way these guys are, the, they're real tender, and they, they tend to be more brittle. Now, a passion fruit, uh, if you only have one, is it self-pollinated or do you need two? Not all, well, per, possum purple is a self, is a self pollinating variety and super productive and more on the sweet side. So I always tell people start with possum purple. And then if you want to move into the yellows and the reds, you can, because a lot of those do need a friend. Okay. So. Granadilla is amazing. I mean, and you can grow it down South too. It's yep. really amazing. All right. There we go. And some more of the, the, the temperate kind of stuff you got. Some blackberries. Still oh wow! Look along. at that's a big blackberry. Wow, wow. So you grow blackberries here? Wow. Mm -hmm. Blackberries, boysenberries, black raspberries. Now, as we're walking around here, here we are in June, mid June, and I know it's early in the morning, and a semi cloudy day, mm -hmm. but. It doesn't feel as humid as it does down at me. Is that normal, or does it get extremely? No, it's you. It's it's you. You just got you just got lucky. At the right time. Okay. And now we're sitting under a two hundred year old oh, yes. two hundred year old oak wow. tree. Wow, is that two hundred years old? It's wow. got it's got to be. It's I mean that thing wow. is humongous. Beautiful. It, it, it's actually worked out well because I it, it's my shade house. Yeah. Essentially, it, it works in that fashion. Okay. You got some tea plants and some coffee plants, some cat leek guava over here. Um bunch of different kinds of grapes got a few different kinds of muscadines then you got a nice uh, bunching grape here Blanc de Bois which comes from the University of Central Florida's breeding program I didn't know they had a, a grape breeding program but apparently they do and, and they make a good wine grape that that actually gives you those bunches because you know muscadines are kind of sure but some lemon drop mangosteen hiding oh, wow. in there wow wow Let's see here. We'll come down, I guess. Let's look over here. Uh, some some things you guys can get away with growing that, that I can't. Oh, you got a chacha here as well. Yep. A chacha and a cacao are both going to be container queens up here. Sure, sure. Now, the lemon drop mangosteen there will handle the cold, okay. but not so much the chacha. And got lots of miracle fruit. You want miracle to take, fruit. You want to take nice. some berries with you, you're more than welcome to. Wow, that's great. Miracle fruit does well up here, all right. Mm -hmm. And then a whole bunch bunch of seedlings. So some of the things you are growing and grafting yourself? Some yeah. Of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Some finger sops and, and java tacabas growing. So jabos do good up here? Yeah, here, come around. I'll show you, I'll show you a couple of trees full of uh, flowers and fruits. And that's what all, all these guys all in here, so, you know, Restinga, Scarlet, Red Hybrid, Sabra. How long have you been doing this here? I bought this property about two and a half years ago. Been, been in the business about eight or ten years, somewhere in that range. So, 
Here you go. Here's here's trunk of flora, full of full of flowers. The, I, I believe these guys probably even do better up here than they do down south. They wow. they, they seem to like our weather. They got a bunch of flowers on there. But here we'll come on. Wow! Look at all those jabos. Wow. And that one's trunk of flora, which is one of the varieties that takes about 15 years from seed to fruit. So they stay in pots, everybody. You don't yep. need to use the ground space for them. <laughs> well, they, me personally, because I'm kind of in swampy area, the nursery here is getting moved out back slowly but surely. This, all the wet areas close. I'm going to plant Jabba Tacabas under there. Just they love the water. They, they love water. They love acidic soil. They love some shade. So when you say you're in swampy area, does it does it flood here sometimes or it does it doesn't really flood because the drainage is good, but it stays moist. Got it. Well, that's good, I guess, for some plants. Yeah, it, it's a mixed bag. Yeah. I mean, let's see what do we got over here? Some Patanga tuba. Okay. There you go. You can see some fruit coming in on these guys here. Yep. They're a ni nice tangy fruit. I like the the pizzang of them. You got some uh, vanilla vanilla orchid, vanilla extract, coffee, uh, coffee, um, black black pepper, piper nigrum, some cherimoya rootstock. Now, those won't grow. Well, cherimoya might, but the, well, none of the others will, right? Well, cher cherimoya will grow here, but you're not going to get fruit. Got it. I'm growing these out for rootstock for atomoys. Atomoys will grow up here? Yeah, atomoys will do, do good up here. They're actually a little more cold hardy than uh, sugar apple. Okay. So. Any, but no, like, custard apple or soursop up this way? Soursop, no. Cus custard apple, reticulata, we can, we can do that. Um, Alama, not so much. Soursop. I mean, I, there, there are some people. I don't know if you know a buddy of mine, Andy Bailey's, but he, Jamaican guy up around here. He, uh, he's got a soursop right against his house. Gets fruit through winter on it. Wow. You With, check but him out. That, that, <laughs> that is the exception, not the rule. Guy, guy, guy. You, you guy. know what I mean? Sure. There you go. You got another, another Javo in here full of flowers. Some uh, jujube. Tiger tooth jujube. So now the jujube here. Now, again, there's the ones we get down south. The these only thing that different. grows down there is the tie, the tie, thornless yep. tie. But here, these are more like California, where you can let them get dried out and eat them like yep. Chinese dates. Exactly. Oh, that was great. That was amazing. And the problem is most of those don't do well here. The Lee, the Lang, the Sherwood, all these things they don't do well here at all. Tiger tooth does. So the 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 tie one, like you were talking about, in tiger tooth seem to be the only two that really do well in Florida. Sure, you, yeah, yeah. I, I know you know Josh Jameson, right? Yes. He, when, I, when I was selling these before, I, I had used my data I collected that these are one of the only one of the, the more temperate kind of jujube that work well. And he sent me a message, oh, man, did, did you see the trials I did? Because he actually trialed them all out and came to the same conclusion that I was doing and it's funny because I hadn't seen his information at that point, but when he mentioned it, I went and looked, I was like, oh, wow. Well, well, now I feel even more confident because he does some really good stuff. And here you go, some different Eugenia's hiding in here. Got some, uh, some Grumachamas coming on in. About, about the end of the season with these guys. Yep. But I like Eugenia's. That's, that's kind of like my little favorite species or whatever. Here you go, variegated banana. I got, I got a long history with these. I actually had a house I just sold last year, and I had these planted over there. When I listed the house for sale, in one of the pictures, and there's some picture of these, someone hopped my fence and went and stole and dug out a wow. whole corm of them. But they left me one, so obviously it was somebody who knew me. And felt guilty taking them, so they didn't take all of them. But they, but they did take advantage of the situation of a vacant house. But here we go. I'll sh show you some more stuff heading back this way. Okay.
There we go. Lock, there's some there's some Jabos striping them up back on here. Oh yeah, those are pretty big. Those are the hybrid red, and then next to it here you got Scarlet. There we go. Some some wax apples. So they grow well here, the wax apple. They do pretty good, and a little froggy taking a nap. <laughs> So, some stuff from my personal collection. Jackfruit definitely not up here, right? Jack, no, jackfruit doesn't oh, yeah, up here. Oh, yeah, really? I, I got a friend right around the corner, big, huge tree, always got fruit on him. Wow, Jack, nice. Jackfruit do pretty good. A lot of the stuff here, because we only get cold for such a short period of time, if you per, if you get it mature enough, a couple, a, an hour or two of freeze isn't going to, be a big deal for a mature tree immature tree death sentence sure sure but once you get over that hill or that hump of maturity a, a lot of that stuff goes out the window there you go just a, a pretty banana here siam ruby it is seeded and the fruit's not real great but you could you can't eat them so but they're they're more pretty and showy the more the more shade they get the more uh darker the red gets in the leaves variegated prickly pear cactus. So you can grow prickly pear here. Yeah, they're actually native to Florida. Oh, wow. The best one I've ever had was up on my family's property in Lake City. A nice purple flushed one. Really, really sweet. I put a Maha Chinook mango tree in the ground last month. Okay. Mango oh, was wow. ready on it, but when I put it in the ground, the thing just went crazy. Wow. Had it ever flowered in a pot? Yeah, it, 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 had, it had the one fruit on it in the okay. pot. And, well, it had a couple of them, a few of them, and a, most of them fell off one health. And I come a few days later, and I'm like, the thing was exploded with flowers. And it's crazy. It's, all, it's only been a month, but being that we're so late in the season and so hot, sure. they're, gr they're growing like super speed. Sure. Here you go, a little turpentine mango for, for future rootstock. It did the same thing when I put it in the ground. Wow. It, Nobody wants to play with the ball, dog. <laughs> Peak mammoth, Atamoya, uh, sugar lotta, so, some Anona hybrids. Sugar lotta. That's going to be what? Sugar apple and, and reticulata hybrid? Wow. And I got some cheriladas up there. So is this a man-made lake here? Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was small when I bought the property. When I, when I bought this property, all this on the other side of the pond was all woods, like back there. Wow. We had to we had to clear it completely, and then and then when you clear it, you start pulling out tree stumps. Now you lose elevation, so we quadrupled the size of the pond to get dirt to raise everything back up. And then most of the, the more tropical stuff is all back here. Getting a lot of sun back here, huh? Yep. When you were looking for this property, five acres here in this area, did you have to look at a lot of different places or was you found this I, right away? Ironically, I friends of mine built this house about 15, 17 years ago. So it was never on the market. I got a phone call one day. Right. Hey, we're, we're gonna sell I know what you do. Would you be interested? So you used to do this at your old house? Yeah. Okay. A small place on like a third of an acre. So this was town. always your goal to get something bigger so yeah. you could expand. Okay. Yeah. And, and now you know, with my ag classification and all that, I don't. I don't have to worry about a lot of regulations and stuff. Sure. But you know, lots of avocado trees and. So tell us about the avocados up this way. I see there's a lot of Brogdon. I know those are a cold yep. part of avocado. What else I, does well up here? Ironically, avocado? in the winter, I didn't. I don't. I have never even laid them down or covered them at all. But I mean, you got Brogdon, Mexico La Grande, Pancho, Ula La Super Haas, Choquette, Monroe, ah. Lula. Um, a few others hiding in here. So what doesn't do good up here for avocados? Um, Simmons, Russell, some of these guys, which, which stinks because I, I don't mind him. He's got no, the I, okay. um, 
I would love to, I actually grow some Russell and some, uh, what is it, Pura Vita, but I grow them in containers because I really like the avocados and they're not going to make it in the ground here. I'm going to plant some avocados, but I had to be careful because, as I mentioned before, I live in the swamp and avocados don't like wet no, feet. It, yeah. So I, I got to figure out a plan to, to overcome them. Some mango trees. Got some mangoes, okay. Some ice cream beans. Ice cream beans. Grumachama cherries. Um, bay rum. Allspice. Peaches. So what tell us about the peaches. What kind of peaches do you grow mostly uh, up here? Florida Grande, low chill hour ones. Florida Grande, Tropic Beauty, Florida Prince, Tropic Sweet, Florida Glow, some of the white flesh ones too. Okay. And, and they actually do really well. But the most underrated fruit tree for Central Florida are these guys right here. Scarlet Beauty Plums. Really? Now, people fruit these down where you're at. They, they call for 150 chill hours. But they literally fruit with zip. And, and like I said, it's it's kind of like mangoes or strawberries or peaches where the properly ripened versions are a thousand times better than the store. Same thing applies with the plums. Wow. So if you like plums from the store, imagine how much better a great example could and be. And you'll get a tree up here, hundreds of plums? Yes. Yes. Wow. You, can, you can definitely get some production out of them. And then here you go, you got you got the native plums. These these wouldn't do well farther south, but Chickasaw plums and flatwood plums, um, star fruit, black shampoo, some jackfruit trees. What kind of jackfruit trees do you have? Uh, here? what are they? Orange crush? Orange crush, it's a more compact variety. And some black sapote. Some, some mis mislabeled custard apples that say sugar apple. Sapodilla. What kind of custard apple you have down here? Uh, they're just seedlings from red, from red okay. fruit ones. So what kind of sapodilla is growing? Uh, you got Murano, Ox. I think there's a prolific hiding in here. June plums and macadamia nuts and canistil. So how, how, so how does canistil do? Canistil does good. It, it's, it's in the same hardiness like mangoes. Protect young trees, mature trees can handle it. Now I see you have uh, macadamia nuts. So what about the nuts up here? Because I know in Georgia you got the pecans here. Yep. Macadamia nuts will grow. And, and then cashews in the south. And cashews. But if so, you if you were going to break down Florida as nuts, pecans in the north, macadamians in the central, and catch you in the south. And so what about critters here? Because I know they love nuts, but they love all fruits. Do you have issues with squirrels or raccoons? Ironically, I don't have a I don't have squirrels here. I don't I don't know if it's the predators or, or what it is, but but we don't have a large I don't have a large population of squirrels. First place I've ever been to in Florida that didn't have squirrels everywhere, but it is. We got lots of bunny rabbits, but but not really much in the squirrels. Raccoons? Yep. He, he kind of keep, and a lot of the wildlife, the, do, the dogs always run around in the yard. So, so he tends to, with his marking and stuff, keep some animals away, I would assume. But you got some, some mulberries hiding back there, some gooseberries, June plums, hog plums. So tell us, what's your, uh, your long-term goals? Where do you see your property here in like five years? L long-term goals is, is well, I'm just to get more stuff in the ground and uh, and obviously start propagating more of my own stuff. So, and how do your neighbors feel about uh, what you're doing? My, my, well, my neighbors on the one side, they, they got 25 acres, 20 of its cattle. And my neighbor, my, my neighbor on the other side, he, he's a Guyanese guy and, and he likes the idea of growing food and that stuff too. So it, it actually works out very well. So on all the stuff you're growing in pots here, it doesn't really have time to fruit because you sell them and move your inventory quite well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So yep. a question I get often is, uh, what's a good potting mix? So what do you use and do you... Man, there's a local place here in St. Cloud called Evers Wood Products. Here, well, come take a walk. I'll show you the... I, I use their potting soil for pretty much everything. 
I, I then I then modify it some for things that like more acidity. But it, it actually everything I pot here is, is based off of the potting soil from a local place and seems to do amazingly well for me. Now when it comes to potting soils, do you, does environment matter at all or is potting soil potting soil? No, nah, I mean there's huge differences. The a lot of the stuff you'll get like at the big box stores. Will, will dry out real fast and not have any retention at all. Whereas this stuff I use here. Wow, nice and dark. I mean, does, well, but does different pot and soil mixes need to be made for colder environments or? No, not I don't, I don't not, not possibly, but not that I'm aware of. Sure, sure. And, um, and do you spray your potted plants with anything at all or not? You don't? I mean, not, if. Depending, I mean, we'll, we'll use some copper fungicide, uh, organic side three in one is a nice organic thing for any soft shelled bugs. Uh, and, and occasionally, maybe I'll have to step it up on a little but but for the most part, I don't do a whole lot of spraying. You can go, you go through most of my containers, you'll find millipedes in there. Sure. And so, your water system, tell us about your water. Is it from a well or? Yep. Yeah, well, I, I, on the far side over there, I'm currently running it off my pond. I got a trash pump that runs the irrigation over there. And then on this side, I just got a simple shallow well. Okay, where, how many feet down? 28 feet. Okay. I mean, the water the water table is like four feet here. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, a after 20 feet, you hit the first pan and then you got good solid water. And how often do you water your potted plants? Every day, if... I mean, this time of year, every day, every other day, usually run zones for about 30 minutes. How's the rain here? I haven't been getting any rain. It's like I've been down in South Florida. You guys have been getting a good amount of rain, right? Yes. We, we have not. Although we did yesterday. It's, start, it's starting to pick up. But I think through like March or something, we had had less than two inches of rain in Central Florida, which is not going to cut it once it starts getting hot. Sure, but sure. And, and you know what it is? It's the it's not the rain per se that is the the big advantage. It's just the cloud cover. If, if there if there's no rain and no clouds, that sun's beating down all day long. Sure. If the if it only rains for twenty minutes, but you get three or four hours of some shade from the sun, that that can be just as beneficial Good as point. the water. Good point. Is that chaya? Nope. That's a uh, um, Mexican sunflower. Okay, Mexican sunflower. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Nick, for showing us around. What is your contact information? How people get in touch with you? Um, you can just Google Nick's Edibles. It'll come up with my Google page. It'll show you hours, address, phone number. I also got a Facebook group with about 12,000 people in it. Um, lots of friendly people. Lots of people have been growing food longer than I've been alive in 44 years that are, that are helpful. So just like all the Facebook groups, what an amazing resource to have at your fingertips, sure. the information from... 10,000 people or whatever. Absolutely. So, I'm, I'm here in St. Cloud, Florida, just south, 15 minutes south of Orlando. And uh, thank you very much for having us come out. I appreciate it, man. Thank All you. Right. All right, everybody. That was Nick. And uh, this place is uh, more impressive than I thought it would be. I learned a lot about growing stuff here in a little cool environment. Wow, if I would have came a month ago, I would have caught him uh, growing apples. So, this environment, you know, you think if we're down south that we don't want to go there because you can't just grow what we can grow down south, but you can get away with a lot more up here. It's a little cooler chill hours. Not a bad idea if you're growing food. Uh, I wonder, it seems like he has a, he can't grow certain things in the ground because it doesn't stay hot enough, but it seems because you can consider he can grow things that we can't grow down south and more varieties of things like persimmons and so on. He might just be able to grow more things here than we can grow down south. So I want to encourage everybody that lives in Central Florida or even just north of uh, Palm Beach County uh, to, to get in touch with Nick and find out what thrives in his area and plant uh, as many of those things as possible. I was telling Nick if I lived in an environment like this, I'd grow a lot of different varieties of persimmons because I love persimmon. And figs do a little bit better here. Uh, and all the things. He has a bunch of jobos, as you saw. And just very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, again, once you go to a different climate, 
you got to learn the different things that are growing there and so on. Uh, but once you learn your environment, you can rock it. This is a place, a nursery here in Central Florida that is a very successful nursery. And the people that recommend this to me all seem to be happy with what they're growing here and also the trees that they got here. So this is Nick's Edibles and I'll put his link below the video so you can check that out if you want to contact him. I highly recommend it. I'm impressed and it's just so great to see people growing fruit trees all over. And I'm going to take this even more north and go to different places in the future. If you have a farm anywhere in Florida or anywhere else, but mostly Florida where I can still travel to in the same day and get there. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's teach others what could be grown in their environments and their climates. So thank you, Nick, for having us out. Uh, and thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and share this with others and let other people know about this. If you have a farm or just even out of your house and you're growing foods, I'd love to come and film. So I'm going to put my contact information below as well. Please contact me if you're interested in having me come out and feature your property, your trees. Or if you know someone else who does grow that you think they might be interested in having me come out, please contact me and let me know so I can arrange that and make that happen. Since Nick here is in uh, Central Florida, uh, also, if you know people, especially in Central Florida, I'd love to come back here and do other videos as well, so please remember to comment. So until then, everybody, thank you for watching. Have a great day and keep growing.